What's up, Life Point Church? Dino Rizzo here. What a honor it is to be with you. You are truly one of my favorite churches on the planet. And I wish I was there uh, right now live, but we are live through all these different media and all these different platforms that we have. I know you've been experiencing church and in, in, in different ways, but isn't it good to know, man, that the gospel just goes forward and, and the encouragement of the Holy Spirit happens no matter what format or no matter what we're doing in person gatherings, online gatherings, all the things that are happening right now at Life Point. And I just want to say how much I love you as a church. You've always been a church that helps people. You've always been a church that helps people try to figure out things. And I'm glad when I came to Christ, I showed up at a church that put me on a pathway, help me get on a team, help me get in a small group. And that's who you are uh, as a people. And you've been doing that. You, you've been to church in all kinds of ways uh, over the last couple months. And I've watched that uh, on all of your social medias and uh, platforms, all of your Instagrams and just been so proud of you. I can't say it enough. I know Delenn and I, of course, I'm here at Church of the Highlands taping uh, this weekend. And so our pastor feels that way, Pastor Chris Hodges. There's so many people just are proud of you as a church, how you've responded to humanity during this time, especially through COVID. Of course, what we see happening in our cities today with the the, the racism and racial reconciliation, so many things. And you've just been such a part of that. You've never been a church, let me say this, uh, that has shied away from the pain that is happening all around us. It's the heart of your pastors. It's the heart of the team right there. And I've just been watching. And uh, you've been to church through creative ways. You've been to church uh, through caring for people, how you've continued to engage the community, how you've continued to connect with people. It's all been about the Great Commission at Life Point. You've been wide open, man. The church has not been closed. Life Point has not been closed. It has been wide open, reaching people. And you know, one of the things that you know if you're at Life Point, if you've gone through a growth track or you've been a part of a small group or you've joined a team, one of the reasons why we exist as a church, and I love this phrase, it's, it's big and bold on your website. It's this right here. We exist so that people far from God will become fully alive in Christ. People that are far from God become fully alive in Christ. And if I was there, I'd say, give me a good amen. Come on, somebody. Yes and amen. That's why we exist. And you've done that through COVID. You're doing that now as you reach out to people through unity and through reconciliation, through restoration, just reaching people, uh, whether giving out groceries or working with those that are service providers, just been so proud of you. You're just faithful. You've been faithful uh, in your love for people and your love for God. Doesn't happen without resources. You know, I can tell you this one thing about life, but you're a generous church. You've been generous towards the world. You've been generous in your own community, reaching out to those that are in need. So thank you so much for always being faithful. Even though COVID, even through COVID I, talking to Pastor Daniels, he, and he was just, just so proud of, as a church. You've been faithful in your tithe, faithful in your offering faithful and generosity, going online, text to give, all those things. Again, why? Because the church ain't closed. Church has been fully open, maybe more open with it than we've ever been. Outreach every day or these days. It's, and thank God for serve weekend, but you really serve weekend every weekend. You're serve day every day. It's a serve culture at Life Point. So I want to say thank you for being generous. You help us plant churches. So I get to be a part of Church of the Highlands, church like yours, Ark, where we plant churches we planted 902 churches because of your faithfulness, a portion of, of your tithe and offering. We go to plant churches. And guess what? I want you to hear this. Super important drum roll. Is this right here? Is we are online. We are on schedule, even during all this, to plant 44 churches this fall. Oh, come on. Isn't that amazing? 44 churches in the world that we live in right now. I don't know if there's a better time to plant a church than right now. And it's because of your generosity. So I just want to say thank you. And again, I love your pastors so much. I thank God for them. Uh, they love God. They love you. Great leaders. I wrote down some words about pastors uh, Daniel and, and Tammy. Is this right here? They're the best. Crazy love. Five-star people. Hey, genuine. Forever friends. They're Delenn and I's BFFs. I'm telling you. Great team. I just thank God. Integrity, uh, influence, leadership, preaching, they love each other, a great family. They are a gift to you as a church. They're a gift to the body of Christ. It's God is using you as a church to impact the world. I love you, Pastor Daniel. We love you, Tan. We love your church. Then Lynn and I love you, love you, love you. And this is a good time 
uh, to, be, to be a part of Life Point. And this is a good week. I mean, you're headed right into Surf Weekend. You're gonna love that city. You're gonna reach out to people. You're gonna love people without pretense. You're gonna love people without a prerequisite. You're gonna love people without prejudice. You're gonna love people with passion. That's what it's all about. So I wanna encourage you to make sure you sign up for the Surf Weekend. Of course, on the website, other opportunities, they'll tell you all about that. A lot of projects, a lot of small groups, a lot of ways right now to be creative in our serving. It's an all call. Serve weekend leading up in all those different ways that we reach out and be the hands and feet of Jesus. It's just an all call. It's a time we do it here at Church of the Highlands. About a thousand churches will do it this coming weekend also. And it's just everybody gets to be a part of it. Again, it's a part of your culture, but this weekend is a catalyst weekend to be able to reach out to people, let people know that they matter to you as a church and they matter to God. So be a part of Serve Weekend right around the corner. We'll talk more about that. Let's pray because I want to talk for a few minutes around the idea, which I believe is the passion of your pastors. It's the passion of your church. I want to talk about the idea ready to reach. Come on. We are ready to reach. We are ready to serve. We are ready to love people and love our city. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for LifePoint. And Lord, I thank you. I thank God for pastors Daniel and Tammy and their family and that leadership of that church. Thank you for them. They are a gift from God. And Lord, I pray your blessing on every person who's gathered, every person who's watching, speak to us today. God, get us fired up. Lord, bless us as a people. Even though we're walking through a battle, there's been some bumps and some bruises, been some, been some hurt. Lord, I pray you, that, that, that through the grace of God, you would pick us up. And even in the battle, we would make a decision today that we're ready to serve for the cause of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Once you turn that person next to you and say, I'll, I'll see you at Serve Day weekend. I'll see you at Serve weekend. I'll see you at Serve Day. All those things that you can say to each other. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm, here, I'm here today because of one word. I would not be here communicating to you today if it wasn't for the word reach. I was reached, me, through outreach. I would have never reached out to the church. I would have never, we were not a church going people. Raised in Myrtle Beach, come on, Myrtle Beach, South Cagalaga. And uh, we, we did not go to church. I was born in Charlotte, North Carolina. We did not go to church. We're not wicked people. We were not like the devil. We just didn't go to church. We were busy. My dad had weekend jobs. We all had weekend jobs. I don't ever remember a time waking up on a Sunday morning and, and hear my parents say, get dressed for church. So we would have never just showed up in church and be like, oh, it wouldn't happen. We, the church had to come to us. So I was reached because a church, literally a, a small group at a church, had a creative, crazy idea to go down to the beach and do, do an outreach during a weekend. And, and, and they came down and did an outreach. And, and, and the reason why I'm here today, the reason why I get to share this weekend, the reason why I get to talk to you about Serve Week, the reason why I'm so passionate about outreach and about missions and about being about others is because I was reached that way. And I, I, I want to encourage you that it's an amazing thing when you realize what's on the other side of your generosity. And it's just not stuff, it's people. I'm one of them. Sometimes you do an outreach, maybe you go to a nursing home or you give out groceries or what you've been doing and serving food banks or reaching out to people in your community, sewing masks or working with service providers or painting a fence or going out and cutting a lawn or being there bringing uh, groceries to someone who's shut it. You wonder, does anybody ever get impacted? Does anybody ever, I've had people all the time say, does anybody ever get reached? We do a serve day or we go out and we, you know, we pay for someone's uh, gas or we go out, we, we give out a bottle of water or we go over here here and we give out a Coke or we, we go paint a high school or we go over here to this widow's house and we help her with the land. Does anybody, does it really ever make a difference? Can I tell you something? I'm one of those that's on the other side of a serve weekend. I'm one of those that's on the other side of a creative serve. I was reached because a group of people said, let's go outside the walls of the church. Don't you thank God for what happens inside the church? But the best thing about the church is when we go from the church. I mean, I thank God for you know, this place, Life Point being a, a place of ministry. But, you know, can I tell you something? It's, it's just really a base of ministry because really what we do from there, ministry comes out from that base of ministry. Thank God for what happens in the building, but thank God for what happens from the building. And that's what Serve Weekend is all about. It's about reaching people because you just never know. You never know when you extend the invitation 
when you extend the love. There's a great story in Luke chapter 14. It's one of my favorite windows as it relates to reaching out to people. I talk about it all the time. It's, a, it's, it's become a life passage, Luke chapter 14, verse 15 through uh, 24 uh, and 23. And, and it's, it, it's around this idea of, of ready to reach, get us ready to reach. It says, when one of those at the table had heard him, he said to Jesus, blessed is the one who will eat at the feast of the kingdom of God. So they're sitting at a table and they're talking about eating and Jesus is talking about others. So someone interrupts him and says this to him and Jesus replied and tells this man a story. A certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent a servant to tell those who had been invited to come for everything is now ready. And they all alike began to make excuses. That's interesting. The first one said, I bought a field. The other one said, I must go and see it. And please excuse me. And then one said, I bought oxen and I've got to go on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. Verse 20 says, this is a great excuse. He says this, I love this verse. I love this passage. I read it all the time. I preach on it constantly. It says, I just got married, so I can't come. The servant came back and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry, ordered a service to go back out again. The streets, the alleys of the town, bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Go reach them, go reach them, bring them in. Sir, the servant said, what you've ordered has been done, but there's still room. That word room right there actually means there's still chance, there's still opportunity. Then the master told his servant, go, go on out again, go out to the roads of the country lanes and compel them to come in so that my house will be full. I love this. I love this whole idea that the heart of God is to reach as many people possible. I love how Jesus is telling the story and he keeps telling the servants. And I think this is important, Lipo, because this is what you do on a serve weekend. This is what you do when you expand as a campus. This is what happens when you decide to plant more churches. Uh, when you reach out and you send someone out or you, 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 you help uh, plant an art church or you go into the mission field, into the 1040 window, or you reach out to someone who's fighting addiction or fighting depression and you create opportunities for them or, and you love them. Here's what you decide to do. You make a decision right then and there that you're gonna broaden the search, which I think is important. We're gonna broaden the search. That's what the master's saying to the servant. I know you've searched here and I know you've invited here and I know you've been reaching here, but I want you to stay ready to reach because I'm about to broaden the search. Oh, come on, think about it. I'm about to broaden the search. I'm about to reach some people different than you. I'm about to open up a neighborhood. I'm about to open up a city. I'm about to open up a situation. I'm about to open up a pain. I'm about to open up a wound. And I'm gonna let you step into that. And you're gonna bring the inviting gospel of Jesus Christ, the mercy and the grace, and through a serve week or through a serve opportunity or through an act of compassion, I'm gonna broaden the search so that you can step in with the inviting gospel of Jesus Christ. Because I've got everything ready for them. Jesus has died on the cross. He has paid for their sins. There's healing, there's mercy, there's grace. Everything they could ever need to a broken person, to a hurting person is being offered by our Savior. And you and I get to live an inviting life through serving. I love this story. I love how Jesus tells a story of being together. I love how he's extending the reach. He's broadening the invitation. I like how a good invitation pulls you, it draws you. Have you ever had an invitation that you heard someone else got and you didn't get it and it gave you a little FOMO, come on, gave you a little, little missing out? Man, I'm missing out. I love how that's happening so often in this story. He says, keep reaching out. A couple of things I love about this story. I love how Jesus loves a good get together. I, lo I love how he's inviting. How about this? I think it's amazing how the, the, the quality of the servant is in them being fluid and flexible. I think that has to happen as it relates to our communities today. Who would have ever thought COVID? Who have ever thought online church, Zoom meetings, online platforms, connecting? But thank God for a church that was fluid and flexible. Hey, let's be fluid, let's be flexible. Let's keep going out, let's figure this thing out. What about what we've seen in our streets right now with the pain of racism, the hurt, the struggle. And as a church, we're being fluid and flexible, reaching out to people, reaching out to people that are different than us, reaching out to people that have a different story, a different journey, being flexible enough, being fluid enough to be there for the hurting, 
to be there for those that are, that are struggling or carrying a burden that we've never carried. I love how the servants, when they think they're done and they think they've done everything they're supposed to do and they think, I guess we're done now, he comes back and says, no, 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 let's go back out. Let's head back out. We gotta keep reaching. We gotta keep doing something. We gotta go back out and broaden the search. We gotta widen the circle, reaching people. Because one of the things I know about reach, when you make a decision and I'm gonna be ready to reach, is it will cost you. It'll cost you some things. Uh, the other day, I had taken my son uh, to the airport early in the morning, one of them early flights. And as I was leaving the airport, I looked at my truck, needed some fuel, and I pulled over to a gas station and, uh, in a, in a, it, right, off the air, right off the interstate. And that's a, that area of town, we have a dream center in it, and we work with those in that community. Some of them have been forgotten, and precious people that have been marginalized, and just struggled, just been through some things. And I remember I was, I was, I was there at the gas tank. It was early in the morning, about 4.30 in the morning. I looked around and saw some, some precious people moving through the parking lot and I didn't really connect. And I just thought they were going to maybe go to a job or walk into a bus stop. As I was fueling up my vehicle, I looked and I realized they were some homeless, some homeless gentlemen, some precious homeless gentlemen. One of them moved towards me and I didn't have any money. I didn't have any money, I didn't have cash on me. And I just thought, man, I need to hurry up and I need to, get fuel and I need to get on out of here and head to the house and he's right there looking in the trash can and hadn't made eye contact just to be honest with you I was I was ready to go and as I was sitting there getting done I was getting ready to get my, and I felt like the Holy Spirit I felt like Jesus he touched my heart and he just said hey just the way I hear from the Lord he just said hey I know you don't want to give him anything I know you don't want to be bothered I know you got places to go I know you're real busy but would you give him something from me what do you say? And the Lord put you on the spot. I looked up in my truck and I looked at a backpack. I looked at a glove box. I looked underneath the seat. I found five dollar bills, five, five, five one dollar bills. Come on, life point, five one dollar bills. And I, I, he was still there and I said, sir, excuse me. I said, Listen, and I had to be honest. I said, sir, I didn't want to really want to give you anything. I, I got a lot going on today. But Jesus wanted you to have this. This is not from me. This is from Jesus. I handed him five one dollar bills. I went to get my truck and he said, he said, hey, my man. I said, yes, sir. He said, you gonna pray for me? I was like, okay, you, you, you now pastor the church. I'm gonna hand the keys of the church over to you because I, I need to get up out of here and go do something else. I said, man, I would love to. We had a moment, got to pray, got to talk a little bit about some things that opportunities we have at our dream center, some other opportunities through some service providers and some things, had a moment, got done praying, got done chatting. We were there for about maybe 10 minutes. It was $5 in 10 minutes, but he, but he looked at me and he said, he said, man, I appreciate you stopping and talking to me. He said, because I feel like the sun, and he kind of winked at me. He said, the sun, S-O-N, has risen early for me. I got in my truck and I rode home and all I could think about is, wow, that was 10 minutes and $5. It, it, you know, it, it wasn't, didn't cost me a lot, but it cost me some time. It cost me some consideration. And a reach will cost you. You can't live for yourself. You can't live on the me island. You got to live on the we island. You got to live in the we world so that you can make a difference. And so often, we don't want a reach to cost us. But it'll cost us. But what's on the other side of it? Oh, thank God I was able to make a difference in his life. Thank God we were able to have a moment. But it did so much for me. Can I tell you something? You're going to make a difference at Serve Weekend all the difference that you're gonna make in people's lives and, and the impact that you're gonna make on eternity and, and the help that you're gonna provide for people. But boy, the difference that it's gonna make in our own lives as we live ready to reach. I wrote down some things about reach that I wanna to communicate to you, just some application because I don't want the reach to stop with us. I want the reach to continue to spread through us. And so I wanna talk about these things with you because we wanna keep passing out the reach. We wanna have a great week and serve weekend. But here's the first thing. There's five of them. I'm gonna give you some application about this reach. And I think it speaks to life point. I think it speaks to the heart of your pastors is this right here. The first thing, this, these five truths about our reach is this. We reach out with credibility. Boy, thank God for the credibility of life point. I started thinking about this. You've been there in those communities. You've been there. You've showed up all these years. All the food, all the help all the care, all the year in and year out loving people, going to that next level for a person, consistent care, consistent love, consistently being there. There is a, you're reaching out with credibility 
Thank God for the name LifePoint that, that has a credibility in your community that people know that you're there to help them. I was at a store the other day and a lady stopped me. She noticed that I speak here at Highlands or, and she said, you, you're one of those preachers? Highlands? Yeah, she was with a friend. She said, hey, that, that's one of the preachers at Highlands at, and one of, the, one of the pastors at Highlands. She looked at me, she kind of looked up at me. She said, oh yeah, you're that church that helps anybody. I, I just, you know what I said? Thank you. What a compliment. There's a credibility when you and I have served, given, and loved. And you've done that as a church through your generosity. We well, thank God for the weekend, but it's a culture. We're all going to come together, expand the culture of loving people, letting them know we are here for you. We will help anybody to so reach out with credibility. Here's the second thing to reach out with generosity. I love what Mother Teresa said, that we're never more like God than when we give. My first pastor taught me that. Came into church, didn't know anything about giving, didn't know anything about tithing, didn't know anything about offering, didn't know anything about giving my time, giving my tithe, giving my tithe, didn't know anything about that. I thank God for a pastor who confronted me, 19 years old, taught me the principle of putting God first in my finances. He taught me the principle of tithing. I never forget, he looked at me one day and said that there's so much freedom on the other side of generosity. But if you don't walk the pathway of generosity, there's so much freedom that you'll never discover. And there's things, there's some things in freedom and there's some things in generosity that when they come together, they're unique to that, to that, to that combination of freedom and generosity that you will not find anywhere else. He just believed that generosity Open the doors up for so many things in your own life, in your own heart, in your own family. Thank God for a reach out of generosity, of giving, with no strings attached. No strings attached. I want to encourage you that. It's a reach out with credibility. It's a reach out with generosity. Here's what this re- weekend is right around the corner. It's a reach out with creativity. Man, just go for it. Turn the students loose. Turn the young adults loose. Turn the, uh, turn the small groups loose. Man, it's just served at all the different sites and all the different expressions. And it's, a, it's an amazing thing when all of a sudden there's creativity with, with a serve weekend. You got an idea? Let's do it. You see a group of people you want to go love for the cause of Christ? Let's do it. You want to do sidewalk chalk? Let's do it. You want to give out uh, peanut butter cookies? Let's do it. You want, to, you want to go make a difference at a school? Let's do it. You want to go reach out to some shut-ins? Let's do it. Want to go to a nursing home? Let's do it. You want to take pictures of people that are struggling some areas of life? We, we take ph- ph- photographers to a nursing home and take group pictures and individual pictures, all these different things. I know there's certain things down with social distancing. I know our surf weekend is going to look a little different. I'm going to tell you, it's now time to be creative. So I want to encourage you. Be a part. It's a reach out with creativity because God's wired you a certain way. And there's something that moves your heart. There's something that makes you smile. There's some way that you've been made for mission. There's some way that you've been born to be a blessing. There's something that moves your spirit and your soul that you see that nobody else sees. And we want to release it. We want to put your creativity in circulation to make an impact on eternity. It's a reach out with creativity. Then here's the other thing. It's a reach out with diversity. Man, there's a uniqueness about you. There's a uniqueness about your experience. There's a uniqueness about your story. There's a uniqueness about what you've walked through. Why am I so passionate about outreach? I was reached through outreach. How can someone else be passionate about prayer? Prayer made an impact on their life. Somebody else is passionate about worship. Worship made an impact on their life. Can I encourage you? Thank God for LifePoint being a diverse church. Thank God for LifePoint just loving all kinds of people. And you know what I've learned? That the best kind of love, really the agape love, is when you love people that are different than you. It's easy to love people like Dino. I love me some Dino. 
I love hanging out with people who like to hang out where I like to hang out. I love talking to people who like to talk like. I love me some Dina. It's, that's just a lot. That, that's a certain level of love. It's another level of love when you love people who come from a different experience, who maybe come from a different struggle, who maybe come from a different part of town, who maybe their skin is different than you, their resume is different than you, their, their family breakup or, or makeup is different than you. It, it's really not love to you love people different than you. Thank God for a church that loves people, all kinds of people, with all kinds of problems, with all kinds of gifts, with all kinds of backgrounds, with all kinds of situations, you will find a home at Life Point. That's why Serve Weekend is so important because it's a hundred different expressions. You say, well, I'm, a, I'm, you know, I'm, a, I'm, not a, I'm not a loud person. I'm a quiet person. I'm a creative person. I work with my hands. I cut hair. I can bake. Boy, I can, I can laugh. I can light up a room. I can think. Serve weekend. There's just a spot for everybody. Because why? We reach out with diversity. So we reach out with credibility. Thank God for the credibility of your church and your pastors. We reach out with generosity. We reach out with creativity. Let's be creative this coming week. Let's, and we reach out with diversity. Let's be diverse. To reach all kinds of people, value, love, lead into all kinds of people. And then here's the last thing. We reach out with L-O-V-E, love. I love how Paul said, oh, there's some things you need. You need faith. Whew. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. You need some hope. Because hope says this, man, today was rough but tomorrow's going to be better. You need faith and hope, but what you really need is love. You get faith, you get hope, but the greatest of these is love because God is love. So we reach out with love, unconditional love, no strings attached. It's not about me. I don't want anything. I don't want to be the center of attention. I just want to give. I just want to love people like God loved me. That's Serve Weekend. Reach out with love. You know, when we planted our church in Louisiana, we just were so small. We had none going on. Little tiny building. Lean worship with one, one, one musician. But we had a heart to love people. You know, we said we don't have good facilities. We don't have good kids ministry. We ain't got no LED screens. But I remember sitting in a little meeting with about 10 people. I said, we love people. We start loving our city like you do. We start doing serve moments. We couldn't even pull together a week. We just had a moment. And we, we started doing some consistent serve. My wife came up with an idea. She saw our church do it. And she said, we're going to give out bottles of water in the summer at red lights. Stop signs. People are so thirsty in South Louisiana. It's hot. And so we iced down water in the afternoon on a Friday. And then we would, we would stand at a stop sign, put some signs on the road, said free water. We'd wave at people, get, wouldn't get out in the road, give a little card that said, you look too thirsty uh, to pass. And gave a Mother Teresa quote. Then at the end, we said, we're here for you. God loves you. That's it. And we give them a little card, give them a word. People try to give us money. People want to roll the window down. It was crazy. We had so much fun. My wife and I and about 10 college students did the serve expression all summer long. About the fourth week, we were done on a Friday, probably gave out 2,000 bottles of water. And we were at the church and we were washing out the ice chest. Truck pulls up. I'll never forget it. Friday afternoon, 6.30. Lady gets out, beat up truck. She says, hey, who's in charge here? Who's in charge? Them kids looking at me. Are you in charge? I said, she said, you the preacher? Call me preacher. I said, yes, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. She said, we do outreach in Macomb, Mississippi. I said, well, tell me about that. She said, well, I get up in this here truck, get me a bullhorn, get in the back of the truck, pull up at the Walmart, preach to everybody, tell them they're all going to hell. I said, wow, well, how's that working for you? She said, well, they all run off, the kids run off, then we find them behind Walmart, then we end up at Sonic, and then we yell at all of them, we holler, and we get in a big argument, and we preach in the gospel. It's amazing, but it's just not going real well. She said, I saw this. I've seen you do this work down the street. I've been seeing you do this. 
She says, I think this is a better idea. Yeah, I do too. I said, Jada, she said, I want to go home and do this. Gave her some instructions, told her, hey, keep that bullhorn in the truck. About uh, six weeks later, end of August, we're winding down. We may have two more weeks of outreach. We're back on that Friday afternoon, 6.30, washing out IHS. Truck pulls up. She jumps out, says, preacher, you're not going to believe what happened. She said, we did that outreach on a Friday night. Left the bullhorn in the truck. She said, we got out and just gave out water and just started talking to kids and just listening to their story. Gave out some other water, even bought some Cokes and some Sprites. Gave out all this water. She said, on Sunday morning, we looked up. There were three, there's a mom and two daughters in our little church, country church. At the end of the service, they came down, talked to our preacher, got prayed for. And, and the mother said, well, we, y- y'all gave us water out at Walmart. We want to come see this church. They gave their life to Christ. On that Sunday night church, they brought that dad, that husband. He had been in church in 20 years. I'm not trying to build up a story, use theatrics, try to move you with words like no, no, this. Is, this is what she said. She said, they, then he came down. He gave his life to Christ. They all got baptized that night, waded in the water. On Tuesday, right after that Sunday experience, that father didn't wake up. He went to be with Jesus. They had a funeral on Thursday in that church. And they, that was their new church. The end of the service when they were gonna go stand by the casket, that mom and the two daughters walked up to the casket and they set three bottles of water on top of that casket. And they told that little church, because you gave us free water, we came to this church. Their daddy and my husband is in heaven now because he gave his life to Christ. Don't you tell me that serving humanity, that reaching out to people, does not impact their eternity. I'm living proof. That's what Serve Weekend is all about. It's impacting someone's eternity. Guess what, Life Point? You never know. You never know what's on the other side of a bottle of water. You never know what's on the other side of painting a fence. You never know what's on the other side of giving a child a balloon or painting their face or going to a nursing home or giving groceries or building out a wheelchair. You never know because at the end of the day, God is reaching out to people and He uses us to reach out. You and I get to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Let's be that church. Let's be those people. Let's have a great surf weekend. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for what you're doing at Life Point. I thank you for our pastors. I pray, Father, that as all of heaven is reaching out to mankind through Jesus Christ, that you will reach us today. And you will reach us to reach beyond us. So, Father, give Life Point the most eternal, transforming weekend they've ever experienced. Maybe you're here today. You say, Dino, I feel far from God. I just, man, I'm, I need a new beginning. I need a fresh start. You're watching, you're there in service. Can you just pray this prayer? And one of our team is going to come and help you take a next step. But right there. Just pray these prayers. Say, dear Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Be my Lord. Thank you for dying for me, forgiving me, and giving me a new beginning. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, Life Point. Hey, hope today's message was helpful for your life. I want to tell you, you should subscribe. The reason why, you can get content pushed to you all the time. You don't have to wonder if you ever missed anything. And also, I want you to think about giving. By giving, you can help us take this message to so many other people that are in need of some hope, need of some encouragement, and you can be a part of making a difference in the life of so many people. Look forward to seeing you right back here next time.